Yo, let's move it all along, guys. Let's move it all along to somebody else. I want to talk about um, the last person I actually want to talk about is something I'm body I'm really interested in, and that is Isaiah Hardenstein. Isaiah Hardenstein, learn from the Joker, okay? I, I, I've heard he, he's he's picked up some passing things from the Joker. That's what that's what I was reading. But he's been a pleasant surprise for the Clippers. When training camp started and he was interviewed, he said the Knicks really wanted it. And I can see why. This is a guy who kind of can do a lot of things that Mitch can do on the defensive end. He, he plays the pick and roll well, 75th percentile, guarding the pick and roll big man, can pass well, kind of reminds me of Kyle Quinn with the passes, the backdoor passes. Um, and, and the quick thinking on that side of the ball. And he has potential to kind of stretch the floor. He, he has a nice little floater game, actually. And he has the reputation of shooting in the three-point shot, even though it's on extremely low volume. He does hit him at a 47% clip when he does take them. I think he took 30 in total last season. Um, Guys, what are you looking forward to when it comes to Hardenstein? For for me, I'm very excited to see actually Hardenstein and Obi play together in particular. Because I feel like those guys' skills kind of complement each other, you know? Obi, a guy who kind of three, but also is a guy who's very good at improvisation and cutting off the ball. I feel like him and Hartenstein together is going to wreak havoc with NBA second units. What do you think, Raw? I see Raw over there squirming. Like he wanna say something. No, no, I, I think uh Hartenstein is I, I already called the second unit led by IQ and Obi Mob Deep. He's gonna bring it to a new level. And the thing is, is that I mean that second unit, to me, that's okay, so. The Knicks' second unit, to me, is one of the best in the NBA. It's Facts. been that way for about a year and a half. But this is going to make them the class of the second units in the NBA, to me. Yeah. And so what helped hurt us, like, if you guys know you guys know very well, like last year, a lot of times the first unit gets us in a hole, the second unit gets us out, the first unit puts us back in, right? I mean, because <laughs> Tibbs kept insisting on putting these starters back in, and either they were gassed or they just simply weren't as good. And the second unit was always like either save us or get us out of hold. This year, right. the first unit is better to me. So when you have a better first unit and now your second unit is coming to another level, I think because Hartenstein does that. He To me, you're talking about him and Obi, and I'm saying like him and Obi and IQ, <sighs> all them cats, man. It's going to be good. I'm very excited about the second unit because one thing we know for sure the second unit is going to play. <laughs> yeah, they're going to play. play. How many minutes they're going to play, we don't know. But they're going to play, and they're going to play well. So that is really exciting, especially if the first unit can either create a lead or hold the lead. Oh, my God. It's going to be good. It's going to be very good. I'm interested to see we can do this. the first unit. Like, also, too, like, I'm interested to see. Listen, one of my biggest concerns have been Jalen Brunson not having the spacing he had. Um, in New York that he had with Dallas Mavericks and not have, having him replicate his success um, in New York because he doesn't have the same spacing. Uh, Hartenstein kind of has the potential to give him some spacing. Him, RJ, and Connor Randall and kind of give it another wrinkle that we never had. So I'm kind of interested to see Hartenstein in different roles here. Um, but yeah, go ahead, Lee or Ryan. One of y'all can jump in and, and, and talk about Hartenstein. What do you think? Uh, he's gonna bring to the Knicks. You go ahead, Ryan. Okay, well, I'll say this about Hardenstein. You know, looking at his stats, you know, he played around 17 minutes, 18 minutes a game for, for the Clippers. He averaged 2.4 assists, which I think is very impressive for a big man within the time span that he played. Because you have big men who play more minutes than that, and they're not giving you 2.4 assists per game. So mm. that's number one. Number two, also in 17, 18 minutes a game, he almost averages five rebounds. So to me, that tells me he rebounds at a pretty high clip as well. You know, if he was getting 30 minutes a game, he probably would give you 10 rebounds. So that's another positive right there, too, as a big man. And 
I just like the fact that he adds that dimension to the game that our bigs don't have, you know, because Mitch and Sims are not really good passers as big men, but he as a big man is a good passer. So him adding that element, I think is a big positive, especially in situations where, you know, if he's in the, if, you know, if he's in the post and say like the defense is scrambling, he can possibly pass it out to the open guy for a three. So I like the possibility of that. I like the possibility of him opening up the floor too as well, since he's a pretty decent three point shooter. He's a highly efficient player, 60% from the field, like you said, 47% from three. So there's a lot of positives to like about Hardenstein. And I'm really excited to see how he meshes with that second unit coming off the bench. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think we solved two major issues this offseason. Obviously, the point guard issue has been a common thread since Delwin bought the team. But we also, for the first time, maybe since Ewing, unless you want to count Evan Eschmeyer. Evan Eschmeyer. Sorry. Go ahead. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold and you will be able to listen to the show. Sorry about that, guys. Go ahead. Uh, we have a big, I'm sorry, I meant Timothy Mosgrove, not Evan Eshman. Unmuted. We actually have a, a talented, dynamic big who can do a multitude of things on offense and defense. Typically, we've had one of those wooden centers. It's blocked shots. It's Samuel Dallenbear. Or we have a, a, you know, a big man can only dunk in the pick and roll situations. Mm-hmm. It might be uh, uber athletic, uh, like Tyson Chandler. But Hardenstein is just a dynamic we have not had in a very long time. For a center, he's a very, very good playmaker. He's also a very good defender as well. He's an awesome rebounder. He has really high IQ and instincts on both sides of the floor. And the NBA has really only seen him in a very small sample size. His career averages it right now are 13.7 minutes a game. That's very little. And I think the Knicks now have an opportunity with Taj Gibson gone. You know Dibs can't pull the Taj card. Right. So he's actually going to get some minutes as that backup center and actually bring a different dynamic to the team than what Noel and Mitch were who were almost like Mitch was like a, a, a better version of what Noel was maybe outside of like shot blocking. Right. But for the most part, the Hartenstein can really give you an absolute dynamic offensive threat, even outside of the shooting, which may or not, may or not, may or may not be realistic. We don't really know if that three point shot is a true uh, part of his game yet, but we do know he's a high IQ passer and really solid mid range range player for a center. I'm excited. Yeah, man. I, I, one of the things too is not even just the defense around the rim. The Knicks have done a really good job finding these big mobile centers who can guard the rim, but also guard like the wing and the guard a little bit. And that's what Sims um, to the, the utmost degree. Mitch can do it. And Hartenstein kind of falls right in line with those three where he can kind of guard the, the the wing a little bit in the center. I saw something that said uh, he was guarding the three point line and was able to kind of the dark bat to the center position and block a shot. Shout out to Ariel who who posted a video talking about that. So this guy is uh, uber talented on both sides of the ball, which brings me to my other question: minutes distribution. I've seen a lot of guys feeling like, you know. Artistine can start. I don't think that's going to be the case, but I do feel like there will be times when he will finish some games depending on the flow of the game. But um, what do you feel like the minutes distribution will be between Hartenstein and Mitch? I'll go ahead, Raw and Raw. What do you think? Um, I, you know, that's a good question because I think it depends on a couple of things. The first, it depends on Mitch, uh, Mitch's fitness. Um, if, if he's going to, because he talked about building up his win, Mitch Rob did uh, over the course of the summer, building up his, his endurance. Because he did seem to be out of breath a lot last year. Now we know he was taking off a lot of weight, but if he's able to keep his wind up, I think Mitch Rob will play a good 25, 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. If he can't, then I'm, we're going to see like a, a split, I think an even split between him and Hartenstein. And it also depends on Mitch's... If he's not going to be in foul trouble, I think Tibbs is going to... Na- Tibbs naturally 
prefers the rim protector uh, and and Mitch is the elite rim protector. So and of course, Mitch is the better offensive rebounder. So those are big. And so and if no pun intended. So if Mitch Rob is in shape in terms of his uh, wind and he's not you know losing wind a lot easily and he is not in foul trouble, he's going to play the majority of minutes. But other than that, I can see it being pretty close, like 23, 25, you know, something like that. Yeah, me too. I I I agree, man. This this is gonna be a battle. I'm really interested. This is probably our team is deep. Our, mm-hmm. our team is mm-hmm. very very deep. I guess you guys uh, deeper don't than have people, deeper, than, deeper than people to realize, man. Really much deeper than people realize. A way a whole lot deeper than most people. And I had something else to say, and it escaped me right now. I'm gonna think about it a little bit later. I bet. All right. <laughs> But yo, salute to you guys. Is I, I know the phone lines are back up if you want to call in. I saw that into Nick verse said that um Hardenstein Hardenstein has a high foul rate. Yeah, both him and Mitch have foul troubles, and that might be the time when Sims gets his little five minutes when both of those guys are in foul trouble. But uh both of those guys have that in common that they they kind of a uh, high foul rate type of guys. But nonetheless, he's gonna be a great addition for for our team. That's fine. That's twelve fouls between the two. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <be> right. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll definitely be fine. Yeah. Uh, yep. Basketball prophet says Harnstein is the best rim protector in the NBA. Literally saved two and a half more points at the rim than Mitch last season per possession. Yeah, it's one of those things with you can foul more and get more blocks. Cause I there was a there was a year where rim there was a year when Mitch. I think led the NBA in blocks or was like number two. And that was the like year. His first or second year. Yeah. Either first yeah. year or second year. Yeah. And that was also the year when he was fouling out like crazy. So sometimes, you know, you got to be able to, to deter with your presence and not just go for the block. So I do value that stat, but it's more impressive like, when you could do that and not foul out. Didn't Mitch have like eight or nine blocks in one game, something like that? This yeah. game, he had like. No, it was like two years ago or something. Yeah, he had like eight or nine blocks. Have that amount of blocks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like eight or nine blocks in the game. So I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure. I, 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 yeah. It might be. I have to double check that. I have to double check that. Oh, I, I thought about it now. I thought about it. What I wanted to say before now. I do also feel like Hartenstein is going to actually. He might actually push Mitch to expand his game because we all we all seen videos of him working on dribble handoff, shooting jump shots. Um, Yo, it's funny. Shout out to Papa Left. Papa Left uh, challenged Mitch to a bet and said, if Mitch Mitchell Robinson shoots one three-pointer, he's going to cash up him in $100. Now, we all know Mitch doesn't need a hundo, right? Mitch is good. Nah, nah <laughs> Mitch should cap at, could cap at all of us $100. But to- listen, Mitch put the hot... I tagged Mitch in the post because... Cause even though these Knicks pretend like they don't pretend, even though yeah, these Knicks watch, pretend they watch, they like they watch, don't pay they attention watch. on social media, I see Mitch in the streets. I see Mitch in the contacts. Mm-hmm. Mitch pays attention. So I tagged Mitch. <laughs> and then I saw like a few days later, he has the, the eyes on the comment. So Papa <laughs> left, you might have to call for up a hundred dollars to Mitch. Cause I think it's coming. I'm just letting you know this, right yeah, now. I, I Sham think, God Mitch coming. is on the way. The Sham God, into the jumper from three is coming. Watch out. Trust me. All right. The, the God Sham God cross. The, sh- the God Sham God cross into the Mitch Curry jumper from three. It's happening. I'm telling you. Mitch Curry with the Back shot. Back. It's happening. And I just want to confirm what Ross said. Yes, his career high blocks in the game is nine blocks against the Magic November 11, 2018. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good memory. Good memory. Good yeah. memory. November. And that was my birthday. Look at that. Oh, and that was like he had like a streak of blocks that year. Like he had like so many games in a row where he had a whole bunch of you know he had a block. Gotcha. Jason M said Mitch joined spaces before. Yeah, Mitch is Mitch is tapped in. He can't fool us. All right. I know we got a caller up, and then um I'm going to tell you the big guest is coming next week after this caller. So 